Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fusion 364 FTC series. This is the 13th video in the series and then, um, if you haven't watched the, the first 12 videos I recommend you do so by clicking on the card in the corner. In the last three videos we've looked at how to construct planes, axes, and points and in this video we're going to put some of those skills to use and we're going to finish up our nut geometry here. Um, so if we go ahead and take a look at some reference photos of what hex nuts look like, you can see that um, they've got like this sort of rounded profile near the top and the it's more rounded near the edges and less rounded um, on the, the, uh, the faces. So um, as we know, when you construct a inscribed polygon, the edges are touching the edge of the, of the circle and the faces are not. So what this is in fact doing is revolving a triangle around the hex. And the reason that it tapers off like this is because the edges are closer to the, uh, the circle, that's it, that the revolve path of the uh, revolved profile, and the faces are not as close. Um, so uh, I'm going to hop back into Fusion, and let's start by using the construct tools that we need to use. So the first thing I'm going to use is I'm going to create a plane. And what this plane is going to be used for is I'm going to create a plane from this edge to this edge. And we're going to make a sketch here. And um, it, it has to be in the middle of these two so it's not offset or angled in a weird way. And you'll see why in a bit. Um, so I'm going to use the plane through two edges tool. Um, and this easily, all we have to do is we just select this edge and we select this edge and it's going to put a plane right through um, the angle between the plane and this this face and the angle between the plane and this face is the same so we've got it nice and centered um, and that's what we want next uh, what we're going to do is we're going to construct a point at vertex um, and this is going to be used in our sketch so I'm going to use this point here and it's if we look above we can see that it's on our sketch plane, um, on the plane that we created. So I'm going to click OK, and now we have that there. So uh, now it's time to create our sketch on this plane that we've created. Um, and this top point, we can you can see we can reference it in the sketch, and this is going to be useful for creating our um, triangular geometry here. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is there were no measurements given in the blueprint that I had um, for the nut on how big that sort of um, chamfered um, curved edge was supposed to be. So I'm just going to figure out what looks good. Um, uh, from my testing, for me, I know that the um, if I do nut height, remember we want to use the parameters so that if this updates, the 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 um, the the curved part will update properly as well, and it'll stay proportional. Um, nut height divided by six looks pretty good um, from what I've seen. Um, you can try it. Um, the less you do, the less curved it's going to be on everything, and the more you do, the more curved there's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and place that, and you can see it's automatically applying the vertical constraint. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place the angle. I think just 45 degrees is fine, uh, just like this, and then I'm going to connect it back. And then let's just make sure to constrain our sketch here. So if we go ahead and drag this, we can see that um, the the sketch geom the shape is constrained, but the positioning for it is not constrained. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to put that there for now, and we're going to use the coinciding constraint, and then this point, um, and let's see. Got, let's move it here so we can see it better. We can use the um, the coincident constraint on this point and this point, and that should lock it in place. Uh, now we've got it all locked in place. Now, um, as we saw in the reference photos, it's not only on the bottom, but you can see it here on the. Uh, it's not only on the top, but it's on the bottom. Um, you can see just the edge of it peeking out there. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to create a line in the middle of this. Um, you'll notice that it doesn't tell me where the middle of this this edge is here. Um, so I'm just going to go from here and I'm going to go nut height divided by 2. And that will give me here. 
and then we can uh, create uh, the line that we're going to mirror over just like that. That's all constrained properly. Um, then I'm going to use the mirror tool right here and I'm going to select the objects to mirror and that's going to be these lines and the mirror line is here. Um, and what you'll notice is that if we change the length of this um, our dimensions are hiding a bit but if we change this to 5 let's say our mirror would update properly um, so that's exactly how we want it uh, and we can put that back on 6 for now uh, I'm going to finish the sketch and then you can see that we have our little triangles and the sketch plane has gone away the plane that we created is automatically hidden and that's because um, we made a sketch on it um, so we're going to Go ahead and keep it hidden since we don't need it anymore. And we can use the revolve tool. Uh, I'm going to hide the body so I can um, easily click on these um, sketch profiles. I'm going to unhide it. If you are editing a body, if you're editing a, a, a body and you have it hidden, um, Fusion will give you a little pop up telling you to unhide it before you continue. So I'm just going to unhide it before. And next, we have to select our axis. So I'm going to select the y-axis here, and we can use that because um, everything is centered. If we had made things, if this had not, the center of the nut had not been on the y-axis, we would have to construct our own axis to use for this revolve. Um, so I'm going to select that, and now you can see that we're cutting away and giving those nice uh, curved edges. So we want it to go all the way around, so 360 is good. All these settings are good. Um, if we did intersect, you would notice it would only leave the the sort of curved portion um, so we just want to uncut and we can click OK and see how that looks um, we can take a look at our reference photos and you'll see that on the face it's just a little bit um, cut away it's not too much I think this looks pretty good I could have gone with a little bit more but it's up to you on what you want to do um, we got it on the bottom there too, and that looks really good. That looks like a nut. Um, so I'm going to hide my my point here as we don't need it anymore. Uh, you can always unhide things and get them back for future reference just like this. Um, and that's all for today's video. That was pretty quick. That was um, really easy to create something that maybe looked pretty complex when you were just starting out with Fusion. This curve profile with the tapers and everything um, but really it was just a really simple solution just a a circular revolve around a um, a, a, a hex shape um, so in the next few videos we're going to be taking a look at the modify tools here we haven't looked at these at all uh, these are not for really creating uh, geometry from sketches but in, in instead modifying um, the geometry that's already made um, and then after that we'll be looking at some joints here as a way to put multiple components together so they move in a realistic way um, and then finally we'll be jointing our nut moving on to some renders and uh, and uh, looking at how to create a blueprint for this screw and nut so I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video